In this video, I'd like to introduce a new series going over one math question each day. And this starting day, January 14th, 2023, will be the first question. And for these questions, I will ask you to pause the video and try to solve this yourself, and then I will go over the solution. And keep in mind that it is important that if you want to learn from this, that you actually put in some effort yourself. If you just continue watching the video and see me solve this, you may learn something, but in general, you will learn much more if you actually try this for yourself, even if you don't really know where to go. Spending just two to three minutes or maybe more struggling through this and trying to solve it will essentially help prime your brain to better understand the material. So when I do ask you to pause the video, I highly encourage you to do that and actually try to solve this yourself. And for each of these problems, I will tell the prerequisites that are needed to actually solve this. And I will post the links to videos if you'd like to learn this further. So for this particular problem, this comes from Algebra 1 and it comes from the beginning of Algebra 1. This is just solving a linear equation where x is raised to the first power in this problem. And we have variables on both sides. We have fractions. We have parentheses. So this is not a very easy linear equation, but it is a one variable linear equation. So at this point, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can solve this for yourself. Now, assuming that you gave this your own attempt, let's make a little bit of room and we want to solve this for x. And there are many different ways to approach this. For one, we can start by getting rid of these parentheses. We can distribute the three to everything, or we can start by trying to get rid of these fractions. But personally, I like to get rid of parentheses first and then get rid of fractions. But if you prefer to do it the other way, that is perfectly valid. So let's distribute this three to the numerator on the left-hand side of the equation. We get three times two X, which is six X and three times negative six would be negative 18 or minus 18. All of that will be divided by four and we get seven X over two minus one fifth. Now, if you want, you could simplify this since the numerator and denominator are both divisible by two, but we can also just get rid of every fraction at once. And the way to do that is to think about it piece by piece. To get rid of this fraction here, this denominator of four, we wanna remember that this fraction bar just means division. So to cancel out division, we can use multiplication. In fact, if we multiply both sides of the equation by four, we will cancel out this fraction here. But let's say we wanna cancel out all of the fractions at once. So if we look at this fraction here, if we multiply everything by two, that would cancel that out. And with this fraction, if we multiply everything by five, that will cancel that out. But if we multiply by four, two, and five all at the same time, that will cancel everything out. But that will create numbers bigger than we actually need. We could simplify it in the end. So if you want to take that approach, just multiply both sides by the product of your denominators, that will certainly be valid. However, if you want to be a little bit more efficient, we can really ignore this fraction of two here, since when we multiply everything by four, the four divided by two will cancel this fraction out. So by multiplying everything by four, we essentially take care of this denominator, and that's because four is a multiple of two. And we will also need to multiply everything by five to cancel out this. So if we multiply both sides by four times five or 20, then that should cancel every fraction. And on the left-hand side, we have four in the numerator and four in the denominator, so those cancel. And we can distribute this five to everything. So we get 30x and five times by negative 18. We can do five times by 10, that's 50, five times eight is 40, so this would be minus 90. And over here, we distribute this 20 to both of these. You can also just write 20 next to each of those if that helps clarify it for you. 
And we have 20 divided by 2, which would be 10. So we get 7x multiplied by 10. And over here, we have 20 over 5, which simplifies to 4. So this just becomes 1 times by 4. And we can simplify at this point. Let me just rewrite the left-hand side. This becomes 70x minus 4. And now we've simplified this to just a linear equation with variables on both sides. And the general procedure here is to move all of the variables to the same side. And I generally recommend moving all of the variables to the side where there are currently more of that variable. We could move it to the left-hand side. We would have to subtract 70x on each side to do that. And the reason I recommend against that is that we would end up with a negative amount of x's. Now you can certainly take that approach, it's completely valid, it's just that you will have to get rid of that negative at the end, and in my experience, students tend to make their mistakes when dealing with negative numbers. So to avoid that, we can move all of the variables to the side with more. We can subtract 30x on each side, and on the left-hand side, they cancel out, we get negative 90. On the right-hand side, we get 40x minus 4. And now we have a two-step equation. We can solve for x. We can isolate this term by getting rid of the negative 4 or the minus 4. We do the opposite. We add 4 to each side. We get minus 86 is 40x. And now the last step is to cancel out this multiplication. We will do the opposite. We will divide each side by 40. And on the right-hand side, we just get x, since something divided by itself is always 1. And on the left-hand side, we have this fraction, minus 86 over 40. But we can simplify this, since the numerator and denominator are both even numbers. So let's divide everything by 2. We get minus 43 up top and 20 down below. And this should be a fully simplified answer, since 43 is a prime number. So if we broke 20 down into its prime factors, which would be 2 times 2 times 5, none of those numbers will divide evenly into 43. So this negative 43 over 20 should be the final answer. And keep in mind that this is a problem we can actually check. If we go back up to our original problem, we think x is minus 43 over 20 and if you want you can even make this a mixed number this would be minus 2 and 3 twentieths or as a decimal minus 2.15 these are all equivalent but in general it tends to be easiest to work with improper fractions when dealing with arithmetic and if you want to check this we essentially need to take x and plug it back into the equation anywhere we see x and then simplify everything. And if we get something back that is true, like two is equal to two, then we know that this is correct. However, if we got something back that is obviously not true, like two is equal to 21, then we know that we likely made a mistake somewhere. And this is something you can check on your graphing calculator. If you have one of the TI-83 or 84, it does have a nice way to check that but I will leave the checking as an exercise to the viewer.